Well, Hardy, welcome. <laughs> it's 2020, approximately exactly two decades on from when Tension One first was released. And I'm stoked you can come along and join me. You were the main star of the first video. <laughs> As I can see on the um, the cover of the video there with my pants down in the supermarket. <laughs> yeah. I've never actually told you, but you were pretty much like having you as a friend and a, a peer and how good you were at surfing. You're a main contributing factor for me to make a movie because I was like, I've got Hardy here. <laughs> I'm crazy not to film him and yeah. try and put something together. So. Yeah, sit quite Yeah, no, it was amazing to team up and, and just the guys we were surrounded with at the time too. And the environment, you know, being being around Marx, you were living in Marx at the time, eh? Yeah, in, yeah. In the the years leading up to tension, uh, yeah, it's just like a tornado of elements that just you know created this madness and this beauty. Like, yeah. So epic. Yeah, for sure, man. So what we'll do, I'll play it through, and we can tell everyone the backstories to what happened and yeah, see how we go. Let's take it live. I'm excited. Yeah. This first shot <laughs> it. is your brother, twin brother Brett. Do you remember this? And he walks into the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was definitely, was and still is up for anything to entertain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how this started was I was going to go originally to the FTI, the Film and Television Institute in Fremantle, and I rocked up there with um, Andy Lawrence to um, start editing the movie and rocked up and Kuss Cat's like, this isn't really going to do. Like he's, And then he put me in touch with this guy, Barry, at uh, Myriad Images. And he's like, he's got a spare computer in his house. Um, you're going to be better off here and he can sort of um, help you along because I was pretty raw to editing and all that. We did like club videos and stuff before, but I'd never sort of done a full production. So I definitely needed a bit of help. So... That was myriad images. So big shout out to Barry who, um, yeah, lent me a computer for a week. He actually um, produced the the cover. <laughs> it's not sort of that artistic or anything. It's just <laughs> straight to the point. But yeah, he um, yeah he ran me through, like showed me basic titles, all the sort of basic stuff. Yeah, I want to know a little more about this scene. Was this your idea or this? Was, you- <laughs> there's a little Easter egg here as the camera before pans out he gives a little thumbs up to the camera oh yeah i do remember that part yeah so yeah <laughs> just there <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah i hit him up i was just down at scarborough i was like look i'm doing a video it will look give me good street cred if i get arrested yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it was pretty like it was kind of ridiculous in itself because why would you get arrested for falling over on a footpath yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here's hardballs the man so, yeah. yeah, you had the opening wave and also the opening section, which we'll get to. So, yeah. I just I, I see that wave and I remember Dave Winchester in my mind for some reason. He was, I remember he was on the shoulder and um, I just, I remember making a real conscious effort of like just crossing my legs perfect through the, through, and just really freezing it through the air. Yeah. And um, I think Whitey, uh, Winnie must have made a, you know, uh, like a positive comment about it and that sort of stuck with me. and reminded me of, of that wave at that moment. <laughs> That's pretty cool. When he, I didn't realise, like, gone through the movies, how many, he was all over WA, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, so this is period 1999, would you say? Yeah. Because I know yep. this Hawaii season uh, was the 99-2000 season because everyone was freaking out about the Y2K bug. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. were big, like big buying up like tins of tuna and filling their baths with water and shit. They thought the world was going to explode. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this was that season. We all um, had a sick cabin, uh, log cabins. And, uh, yeah, it was a good season. And then, sure enough, yeah, the stroke of midnight 2000 and nothing happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Play on. So, yeah. So, where, so, tell us about Margaret River for you in 1999. You were living in that Townview Terrace, hey? Uh, by, by 99, I was living out at Witchcliff. Had you yeah, already moved? Yeah. Yep, by that, by that time. Yep. Yep. And um, yeah, we were just out in, in the bush there with a tra- on a bit of a property with a trampoline and um, yeah, plenty of room to just like practice stuff and, and uh, dream at night time and be creative. Yeah. Yeah. I remember coming down. So I finished school in 96 and my last year at school, I was just constantly (laughs) 
constantly coming down south and then as soon as school finished I originally enrolled to do uh, film and television but decided to move straight down south and um, yeah sort of figured if I got the chance to actually film I can put study on hold for a couple of years and see how I go and then yeah before I knew it we were sort of when, set- when you first moved down to Marks, that was after your 12, 97. Yep. Did you have more riding ambitions, do you think, when you first moved down? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I had yeah, I professional uh, ambitions. Yeah. <laughs> ambitions, yeah. 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 So it was all about riding the first couple of years. And then after that first season, we went to Hawaii. I kind of realized that I wasn't going to be a professional bodyboarder for the rest of my life. So, and, and you, but you were already a part of, like, you'd had features in the, the videos of the time. And you'd had relationships with some of the videographers like Chris Stroh from yeah. Underground Tapes and, and that side like really drew you in, didn't it? It excited yeah. you. Like. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's <laughs> <laughs> Nicky Scott there from Margaret River. <laughs> this is where it all started on Chucky's dad's motorbike. <laughs> what is tension? Tension. Tension's all around us. Every day we go through tension, all of us. It's uncomfortable situations like this. I see my son when I watch that photo. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, it does look yeah, like, yeah. oh, hey. Yeah. Got the, the hardball's freckles. Let's check out the booty. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That, uh, like, I love how everything back these days. The it's dog all, chasing it, me. Where it's all one from? shot, hey. Like the number plate's fallen off, you almost stalled, the dog follows you. <laughs> yeah. it just, and a car coming the other way, yeah. the other way unstaged. Where yeah. is he? And uh, that, that was a, a dare, wasn't it? That, that on that day, was it? We were, yeah, we were daring each other, like playing rocks paper to see who would lose the dare and um, we'd come up with the idea of what we're doing. I remember you were you were uh, lopping trees with an axe and naked and I was oh, filming yeah, that. I remember that. But that didn't make the cut. <laughs> <laughs> that wedding was in Bunbury. Were you there that day? No, no. It was kind of What about this dance? This What's was Bunbury as well. So this is Moffat in Bunbury. So I think because we were living in Margs, there was only so much we could do in Margs, like running a muck wise. Yeah, yeah. So we used to do these little day trips down to uh, Bunbury. That's our beloved friend and entertainer, Johnny, full of energy, full of beans. <laughs> I like how the um, the people in Bunbury there that were doing that performance, he got up there, he got about, he kept singing, but he got a few words in and they cut his mic. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I think you can hear that in the audio, can't yeah. you? Yeah. What are you looking at me for? And what was your inspiration in um, doing these sort of scenes? Was I know CKY played a big part. Yeah, in for you? sure. Yeah. yeah. So, the, yeah, this is all... 99 so ck1 had just come out yeah and that's um basically these american guys uh from pennsylvania i think they are bam margera and brendan de camillo they used to film like skate movies and muck around and they had a semi-metal band yeah and yeah that was we had a little crew down south in marks that enjoyed skating yeah uh benny pateman andy toby uh, BVD or them guys and yeah we used to just religiously watch these videos and definitely draw inspiration yeah and what was the feeling at the time like we're, we're all about 20 years old obviously like bursting with energy like what what um what was the feeling behind like that chaos and and um you know doing something which which was fun and like this yeah you know <laughs> <laughs> kind of, like yeah how did how, how'd that feel at the time like was what were you guys sort of thinking i guess and i feeling. guess we were just like free spirited all about enjoying ourselves like, and and it's and but knowing you'd be entertaining other people watching it yeah like, exactly yeah, like, like making just, them laugh yeah we do something like as much just for ourselves like filming it was a bonus like yep. i guess even when we're filming all this we had no idea that this would end up being so popular yeah <laughs> like we just yep. thought it was almost like home video styles like we're just trying to outdo each other and we just didn't realize it would become what it did yeah okay Yep. And yeah, <laughs> other early influences for sure were the, the No Friends guys. They'd been over once and met Ross and all them, seeing them make movies. And, yep. and then, like we were saying before, Stroey. What, what influence would um, like Underground Tapes and No Friends, like what influence did that bring to tension, do you think? Like more the surfing side and the, um, like the photography and, and you know, showcasing the, the, act, the sport. Yeah. Bodyboarding. Well, there's just like, we just idolized everything about all of them underground tapes. Like we would watch it. We'd know every word to every scene. We'd know every guy. And it was just like, it was like our religion basically. So then when we started doing videos, you don't even realize like what you're doing 
is the same. Like what other kids are doing watching that is exactly what we felt watching underground tapes. Yeah. So it's kind of yep. strange in that respect. Yeah. Because I'd never, you know, when you're like year six at school, you, you always think the year sevens are the big kids and you never realise that you're going to be that big kid yeah, the yeah, year totally. after. You're yeah, always looking yeah. up. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you can see watching this, it is a real, you know, it's a real mix of CKY, um, you know, antics and, and entertainment. And then you've got the you know, underground tapes, no friends feel with the, with the surfing and uh, top riders and mix and, and having a cool edit to a song. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. How's this double entendre? <laughs> uh, I wonder how little, that'd go down these days. A little yeah. sexual assault <laughs> for everyone there. <laughs> Sign of the times though. Yeah. Over yeah. Two, three decades ago. There's um, Naji with his little girlfriend there. And here we are, the man, okay. the myth. Yeah, Hardball so sitting right probably, next to me. Yeah, my first major profile section, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah, because I just had little parts on videos on, you know, underground tapes yep. and no friends. And so this was probably my first full length song, full profile section. And, and it's still to this day, like one of my favorites. Oh, that's so you know, sick. It's at, it's at a part where a time when uh, body wearing was just everything to me and, and filming, you know, with you and, and with all our friends at the time was just such an exciting time. And I had had just such huge ambitions, you know, to be as, as good as I could as a rider and to become one of the best in the world. I was just Man. super driven. Oh, chicken skin. Yeah, just yeah there you go. Yeah. It's so like weird, was, like, just that shot before. Like, I remember being underwater. That was at Cobblestones filming you. That underwater shot at the start. Yep, is it, yep. Like, every shot, it just brings back memories. Yeah, it must. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be interested to hear that as, we, as we're going through. Yeah. Yeah. This is North Point. You were just, the, used to just dominate North Point. Yeah, that's definitely one of the favourites, and and you, you you definitely had a, a knack of nailing song to like the feel, the energy of the surfing, and um that you know, and then and then we go on to uh, bring singing into the sections yeah. to add to the entertainment. But, I was trying um, to work out how did that come about the you singing the songs. I don't know if it's something we saw or we just came up with or what, but I'm I'm pretty sure it was you pitching the idea to me. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you know, you knowing my character and, and just knowing okay this is going to be funny and it's going to make people like laugh and make people amped at the same time watching the section so i really think it came from your creative mind knowing that i'd be up for it yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that is just you though the country bumpkin yeah yeah there i am in uh at, at our place at Witchcliff at my stepdad's house and now you yeah. exclusively eat straw <laughs> <laughs> i do that lives the plant life <laughs> yeah and i won't back down <laughs> that is so classic. <laughs> and that was gas, wasn't it? Yeah, that's probably the break in the world that I've surfed the most. A little interesting fact there. Um, yeah, from sort of age 13 onwards, it was yep. the break in Margaret River that's the most consistent and uh, it's got lefts and rights and bowls and beachy sections and it's just you, such a good practice wave. Do you trip out nowadays? How Like back then it was like a, a gravel, barely a road getting there and now it's like bitumen car park. Does it spin you out or you've um, just, it's been so gradual? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, you know, the gradual progress of, of evolution and, and, you know, access as the town spread. But yeah, to think back on how remote it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, it, oh, that's, that's a good fact there. There's my twin brother, Brett, on a boogie uh, behind me. And I think I nudged him off in the first <laughs> shot. That's, that's a funny one. But you could see him do a cross leg stylish spin. And he had a, he, um, oh, he surfed at a, a really good level on, on a bodyboard. I remember going down Rivermouth and him doing full loopy backflips off backwash <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Yeah, with yeah. With like perfect style. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, well, I mean, he did bodyboard a lot uh, over our younger years. And we did do quite a lot of crossovers. Yeah. And um, yeah, but some, some of the riding he did was definitely a high level. Do you remember in Hawaii that year how his boards got stolen from our house? Yeah, yeah, tragic, tragic. Yeah, yeah well, that was under the house, hey? Guns, yeah, yeah, it was New Year's Eve. Yeah. On the, it was the Y2K bug. <laughs> <laughs> they took it all out on some villains our boards. And, um, <laughs> yeah, Brett was on the receiving end of that. Yeah, did yeah. Um, Wonton got involved, hey, to try to get him back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we, we yeah. never got him back though? No, I don't, no, I don't think so, no. But he did, Brett did eventually get an insurance little payout for it yeah after a lot but of when you're in hawaii you want your boards oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're just left stranded yeah, what a way to, to start the millennium eh? Have yeah. all your gear stolen is this little is, pipe um, yeah yeah pipe comp early days is the final final wave of the section 
throw on the arm up for a bit of entertainment. I think, um, yeah, that, that's a nice little moment there to, to where, you know, I know the camera's there, I know you're there, and, you know, doing that backflip, I'm doing, trying to do the most perfectly executed backflip I can, just in that environment where I mean, I'm at home, and there's pumping waves, you're filming, we're filming for this video, I'm trying to be become one of the best riders in the world at that time. And um, that's that's kind of all shown in that in that wave, that last wave of the clip. Yeah, I was, you know, a little frustrated because I didn't perfectly execute the move. It looked pretty damn perfect, but uh, <laughs> I was still, you know, still having a laugh about it. So yeah, that's kind of showing my character. Yeah, for sure. And so this is kind of inspired from CKY as well. There's, I'm not sure. I, well, no, I think I've always loved a pun. Always loved a pun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never knew we we're going to go so literal with it. <laughs> <laughs> That before on that melon grab, that was, um, do you remember Andrew Brophy? Yes. Wave, yep. Yeah. So that was him doing that melon grab. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Not the assault, the, um, oh, the actual that skateboard. That's, that's in Keiki. A lot of Aussies sort of travelled to Hawaii. Very fond of that place. Huge shorey run the sand. Fact here, absolutely smashed myself. Little did I know that they were holding tissues up with wood. <laughs> Lose my ribs so, so bad. You'd call that a backfire, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just like that one, bit of coke on the pants. Yeah. This is Chucky. God, Chucky was good value. He was up for anything, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so Definitely. he had a little, like, so many kids moved to Marg's. Um, Chucky, Moffat. Nudge was, Nudge, Nudge was already down there, wasn't he? Yep. At that stage. But, yeah, so Chucky and um, Moffat, they moved down from Perth like me, and we just had, yeah. We kind of had our little gang and then Chucky was kind of the new kid to the gang, hey, and it was kind of like this initiation period. Yeah, yeah, we had to, he had to sort of prove his craziness. Yeah. And he, so I remember therefore, pe people were doing burnouts on his lawns. Yeah, yeah, that's, yep. On yep. his driveway. It's a bit, yeah, a bit of the like new, new kid at school sort yeah, of vibe yeah. going on. We chopped a few of his trees down. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, little baby Husey and Chatty. And that was um, cool to see Joel Taylor in action there before. Um, yeah. Yeah. Our, our mate that, uh, uh, like, yeah, tragically career ended at pipe um, from a wipeout and, um, yeah, finished his, his early riding career there and he went on to launch uh, Unite Clothing, which yeah. is um, a big brand in bodybuilding these days and has supported me for a lot of years. Uh, yeah, shout out to Jolie. Yeah, Legend. for sure. It's good Incredible. catching up with him. He's just had his kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the East Coast. A lot of this footage was kind of WA or Cronulla. And these Cronulla guys, they were they were like a pretty big inspiration early on because they had to connect with Strowy and we used to hang out with them. Yeah, and they, they, were, they were all like around our generation. Yeah. And they, the guys that we hung with. And they, they used to say, that's where the name actual tension came from them guys because that used really? to be a, a word they used to always say like. Exactly, yeah, so I remember happened, that. They'd be like, oh, there's so much tension. And if then if I just there was sort of, one guy, when you when you say that and you think of a Canala guy saying tension, who, who do you think of? I think of, of Alex who, Leon. Alex Leon. Who it's do you a, think of? <laughs> Uh, yeah, probably Alex Leon or too. Or Paul, yeah. Yep. And, and he was, Alex was the CEO of, of the World Organization of Bodyboarding yeah. for, a, yeah, almost the last sort of five, six years. Yeah. It's quite funny. Imagine you could tell Alex back in these days that he'd be the CEO. Yeah. <laughs> Such a spin out. I don't think any of us back, you can never predict what's going to happen in 20 years down the track, can you? But oh, 20 years. <laughs> no way. Belfsy there. Owning the corner shop down the, what's it called? The Gracetown the uh, shop? Days? Yeah, Grace, Gracie's General Store. They uh, still, they, they don't have it anymore though, do they? Um, at Gracetown, yeah. where North is? Or yeah, yeah. Oh, they, no, they don't own it anymore. No. There he is, full card. <laughs> the old slap in the face, that was from CKY, wasn't it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely was um, up for anything, eh, Chucky? Yeah. Yeah, that it's wedding earlier that we watched that key, was so key good. player for a, a long, lot, large part of the series yep. of entertainment. But Nick still going strong. Wasn't afraid. Introduced the world to the penis fly trap, didn't he? <laughs> Can you explain the the, the de what, well? The, what's I don't going know if it there. needs too much explaining, but it, it involves <laughs> leave it to the imagination. <laughs> it involves a foreskin, <laughs> and it involves the death of a fly. <laughs> And it's uh, one of WA's uh, original legend bodyboards, Joe Jordanoff, getting shacked at North Point. He, yeah, you and Joe were the original, uh, you had the rivalry, hey, competition-wise? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Joe um, was a multi-state uh, title 
champion, state champion and a national champion. And um, he was like competing before me and was, was one of the riders that I looked up to and sort of saw what was possible Yeah, you know, as far as young guys doing, doing well um, competitively in the state. And, and it, it, you know, being able to ride at such a high level at a young age, so um, he was he was a big inspiration to me and, and a good mate. Yeah, and still is today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Kuss Cat, there. That's the guy I mentioned at first. He did um, what was some? He's, he did Waterworks One Way. Yeah, water, One Way Waterworks Perspectives and Superstars One and Two. Yeah, all sick movies. <laughs> yeah, and all all around the same time. And it, and it's uh, yeah, interesting to look at it and reflect on it now and see. That that you know, you guys had a bit of a video rivalry, and and um, that that pushed the standards for both of you guys' series of movies. Yeah, for sure. And um, that's yeah, that was just something that helped that era of videos raise the bar even higher. Yeah. Oh, this is just classic, isn't it? This is my favorite moment from Tension so One. Te- yeah. I mean, so this, is, I think his name's that's Terry and Joy. Police. You're in a dangerous position on the fucking road. You could cause an accident. Take your fucking photos somewhere else. It's like else. he needed a factory reset, hey. It's like That's he's, he's wound up and there. he just needs a restart. Hey, hang on, mate. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hey. You're in a fucking dangerous well, you spot, man. You can just, uh, yeah, you it. You you feel it and when you feel it, don't you? It's um, quite tense. Yeah. 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 Credit to Jonesy here. He handled himself so well. He could have snapped easily. Little shit teenagers like and you. yelling at Mick Muir. This is... Up. Um, Don't have to lose your head. I, like, look at Muir. He's well, just the mellowest guy. You're older than these guys. I'm happy for someone oh, to come up and yell at me because I'll probably all. deserve it. Oh, like, I was cheeky yeah. and doing all the stuff. But, like, Muir there, apps, they're just, like, the nicest guys. They're not causing any trouble just sitting there. And then he comes up, parks on his wetsuit and just gives him an yeah, absolute right. mouthful. Yeah. So uncalled for. But ended up being one of the things most renowned for the video like that's what got media involved yeah, lo- right. local newspapers yep. everything mm-hmm. hey guys i'm eric from Ellen Colin and you're watching tension this i, I never realized because i always known the Look movies the as bird. tension but every now and then people come up and they, yeah. they say oh yeah we do tensions has it been like with yet? plural and yeah, i've yeah, never yeah. really liked it yeah but yeah i was like well, that's annoyed me a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's like Fair enough. Like they watch the movie, it's whatever they want it to be called. But and it is a that, series, I guess. There yeah. is a plural to it. But that could be the reason why, because he actually said you're watching tensions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the earlier days, so fair, especially fair yeah. his Mitch Rawlins <laughs> getting in on the um, the stunt action. Yeah. And um, it, I mean, it did kind of set set a trend amongst the the writers of that generation. You know, like some of the the top guys, or at least you know the top younger guys, were doing these crazy things, and you, you kind of noticed everywhere you travelled. Um, it was something fun and exciting to do, whether there was a camera or not. Yeah. <laughs> it did make for an entertaining era, that's for sure. Yeah. So how old would Rollins be around this time, you reckon? Yeah, around this. So he was um, always three years younger than me, so he'd be about uh, 16, 17. 16, yeah. <laughs> such a yep. baby. And he was going to – this must have been some of these waves, probably his second oh. season in Hawaii or third, you reckon? Yeah, second. Second uh, season. Yeah, I remember he was riding for Manta in his first season. And then he just crossed over to uh, science. Science, uh, yeah. Yep, under the mentoring of, of Stuart this season. Yeah, staying uh, with him and everything. Hey. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he's he's riding just um, jumped ahead and leaps and bounds over that kind of year, two years that he was Pardon with the science. Pun. He's riding, <laughs> <Yeah>. jumped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can fart too. Can produce a, a wicked suck fart. <laughs> I can get sunburn as well. He just he he and yourself, you and Rawlins are the two guys that can just paddle out and stay out for eight hours straight without using sun cream and drinking. You're just out there till the job's done, and then you come in. Especially at that age, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure how uh, inclined I'll be doing doing that at, at forty now. Yeah, I'll probably end up in a sun cancer clinic. But <laughs> at twenty and seventeen, yeah, a bit more unbe- unbreakable, invincible. I remember this session that was we were staying at log cabins and that was right out front of our house. So it doesn't get much better as a filmer there sitting on your back balcony. Rollins is out. It was actually hard to film because he was like with Stuart, they were obviously traveling to pretty remote places and it was rare that it all lined up where it was an exclusive session with Rollins out front of our house. So there's no one else filming. So I knew it was like the best time to get good footage of him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's that's um, pretty cool to think about what you'd you'd be feeling behind the lens when you're 
filming some of this epic stuff going yeah. down. Is it pretty memorable when you watch this? Do oh, you yeah. have flashbacks of you filming it and how that felt? Yeah, I can remember, yeah. As bad as my memory is, there's certain things that will just peak a feeling or like yeah. I can just, yeah, it brings it back. Yeah. This was, um, yeah, Rot Nest. I think we're all over there for a competition. Yeah. Where are we? Yeah, One yeah, of the yeah, state programs. Australian tour events at, the, at that time, 99. So that was always a good chance to film because all the... <laughs> and it's like the more, the more guys you have together that are willing to do this stuff or, you know, find it funny and are young and got the energy, then it it amp pe- lift people to do even crazier and crazy stuff. Yeah. And, and what was good at this time, Tension 1, see here, we had a fair bit of anonymity at this stage. Like people didn't know who yeah. we were or whatever. Yeah. And as it grew, it became harder to film that candid stuff because people straight away they'd be like oh attention yeah like, really yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bit of public nudity and then a front flip <laughs> so i actually pushed my luck with um a maneuver just like that we're in hawaii years probably actually no it was this it was around this time and we we're walking the streets of honolulu one night and i um jumped in there was like this big hawaiian family getting their photo and I jumped in to get a photo with them. And I don't know why, I just um, pulled my pants down and oh. mooned. Oh, yeah. And then uh, one of the local guys, must have been his mum in the photo or something, just got right in my face and was so close to punching me out. Oh. <laughs> you know, and you could feel someone's anger. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this must be. Yeah, I mean, that's the th- just like the, the motorbike guy in the other scene. Um, it's kind of all fun and games for you, but I guess if someone's on edge already, exactly, like in a, in a, um, they're not in the same mindset. The setting, yeah, they're not <laughs> definitely not in the same mindset. But also, and I think that Hawaii thing, like forty-year-old me now knows that that's not on, like, yeah, because yeah, right. it's an yeah. older women they don't understand the joke. Whereas twenty-year-old yeah. me was just living in the moment, being yeah. stupid, like. yeah. <laughs> knowing what's funny to a twenty-year-old and other twenty-year-olds watching it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sucky lefts with a rare. Appearance. Yeah, <laughs> there you are flipping out. I actually don't like surfing lefts. I was surprised I landed that. Well, yeah, I'll throw in a fact there that uh, rights have always been my stronger side and just felt felt more natural. Yeah, you know, as much as I love riding both, the fact that I've ridden more l- rights, uh, more heavy right waves, and hit more right bowls, it's um, you know, it's just a, it's a, an equation of I've simply ridden so many more rights. Um, that makes me more comfortable on right hand. Yeah. And, and you know, saying that's, that, your symmetry is still fucking good. Like Chopu yeah. spin under the lip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there, in, in saying that, you know, there, there is strengths you have on both, riding both sides. And I'd say my left spin into the barrel is, is actually stronger than my right. Yeah. It's just a bit more natural. Yeah. And You've always had such an analytical approach to your bodyboarding, like you, with filming – because before I was even filming you, you and your brothers and all your little Margaret River friends, you used to do your own home videos. And I've never seen someone critique, like you used to slow-mo every wave, every manoeuvre. And if you saw something that you didn't think was right, you'd you'd work on it out of the water, like on a trampoline or on a chair. And yeah. You just yep. honed everything. It was a level that of professionalism and dedication that I don't think I've seen anyone else attempt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, there's a lot going on there psychologically that could kind of ramble on for hours. But, you know, the, at the heart of it, um, I was just inspired by like Mike Stewart, basically, who was a bit considered the best bodyboard in the world. And it just looked amazing what he was doing. And, and I, it made, inspired me to want to be one of the best oh, in the world. And um, that was my, my whole drive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool, sir. Again, this is something like twenty-year-old sort of. Did, did not, you guys come up with this idea, or I don't think so. Videos? I reckon, yeah, jumping out of a box, surely it's been done. <laughs> Props to this security guard. Look at this little kick. Look how cute this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, there's someone handling it very calm. <laughs> yeah, that day we were getting kicked out of shopping centres left and right, and there was that security guy just handled it really well, and he was like a contrast to this other guy that you'll see at the very end of this movie. This guy. Scott has had it in for us. Couldn't see, <laughs> couldn't see the funny side to it. That's and, for sure. And I mean, the, the entertaining part is it's like the, the more the reaction's intense and uh, aggressive, the, the better entertainment it makes, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess the problem with jumping out of a box is when you're in the box, you don't really know who's coming, and it could be someone really old. Like if you 
potentially gave oh, someone yeah. a heart attack, you might feel partly responsible. Do you think that was something that was crossing your mind at the time? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> The only thing, yeah, across the divide, you just want the best reaction possible. So here's Mike. He, this was, that was the t- year 99-2000 season. Um, pretty sure at this stage he was about 37, 38. Yep. Grooving it on the dance floor with his wife Lisa there. Such a nice couple. Like, I can't believe they used to let us in their home and I went around there to film him a few times and he's just... As a kid, I, I would never have thought that I'd ever meet Mike Stewart, let alone be a friend with him, stay, go visit him in his house in Hawaii, have him come and stay at my house. Like To this day, it still spins me out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah um, kind of forever a magical figure. Yeah. But, yeah, when you see him, it uh, just raises a heartbeat. For, you know, for me, like it, it just superhuman. But what, what I was looking at there when I was watching him is um, just how he's – uh, kept his physical form, like just perpetuated it. Like, yeah. You know, when I've seen him in Canary Islands a couple of years ago and um, current riding form when he's done tour events and stuff, like it's, yeah, it's just as sharp. He's charging just as hard in the water. Uh, and he, it's just, it, you know, you can just see it comes from the pure fact that he just loves it and he just still loves challenging himself and, yeah. um, and inspiring others. Yeah. Unbelievable. Very, there was actually a. I was just paying attention to that girl sun creaming her chest. That was actually a sketchy moment. Like little did I know that was Sonny Garcia's wife. Whoa! <laughs> Which yep. I, I found out later. I was like, well, I probably should have put that in the movie. Twenty-year-old acting on impulse. Oh, again. there it is again. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, so here, yeah, here you've got the no friends guys in your video. I mean, how did that feel to to kind of be filming them and featuring them in the vids? Yeah, so, trippy because they're like obviously their movies came out. Was it we worked out about ninety seven, ninety eight yeah, or something? Yeah. So they were their movies were just like the underground tapes, but maybe even next level. Yeah, like performance as far wise, as like, yeah, and, cult cult videos coming from America, which through that the decade previous to that, you know, late eighties to late nineties, they were really leading the charge of performance media. Um, yeah, basically everything in bodyboarding. So. Um, yeah, when the No Friends series came out, that was that was huge in the bodyboarding world. Yeah, so I think yeah, their presence in the video would have really lifted sort of the um, the prestige of, of of tension and also like how far it would have spread. Yeah, having those guys in the video. Yeah, I've always forever been grateful to Stroey. Like when I don't know how it came about, but in Psychotic, he ran a couple of waves of me, and I was just like a nobody. And I think we sent him footage or. I don't know who the link was through, probably through you or the Cronulla guys or something, but he somehow used a wave of me and that like instantly. Roll fronting at locals? <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the yeah. left up at Yancha. <laughs> yeah. So that in, in like instantly elevated my thought of what was possible. I was like, I'm in a video, like I could, I can be anything I want to be. Like I thought that people in the videos were just professionals. Like I never considered that that would be me. Yeah. And yeah. that feeling I had, I then got to, do to other people so with my videos i've always been it didn't matter who it was if if there was a good wave i'll run it and put their name and i yeah. know that just by doing that might start them on a journey yeah it yeah, could totally. end up you just don't know where it could end up it, yeah it's it was such a, a cool feeling first joey just to yeah first put me in and then yeah. to know that i got to do that for other kids that yeah that's that's really cool I can, I can so relate to that as far as you know getting uh, autographs from from my idols when I was younger, and getting photos with some of them, and then you know now to me being the the idol and the the sports person that young younger guys will aspire to and yeah. come up and get a photo. It's like straight away puts me back in in that moment, and yep. um, yeah, it stokes you out, doesn't it? That, that's amazing thing. what you're doing current day with your your bodyboarding schools. Like you just went camping down runs with some groms, fourteen year olds. Like that is. That's lifetime memories for them, getting to go to surf all these spots with you. like that. It's so cool that you're putting back into the sport like that. It's yeah, it's, oh, it's incredible to be able to offer that, man. Like I know how stoked I would have been if I was when I, when I was that age doing something like yeah. that with one, one, of, you know, one of the sport's best and one of, one of my idols. Um. <laughs> Did you get to go to the, the Mike Stewart coaching clinics? Or? No, I didn't. Because you were no, down south, no. yeah. So they did that in Scarborough, yep. Bullet, Nugget, all them guys. I think Jay Real was even there. And yep. yeah, that was 
amazing for so many people in WA, like on the vintage bodyboard side. I know so many people bring that up, them old school coaching clinics. Yeah, yeah. And it no, does make such a difference. And yeah. it's crazy that it's like when like you're pretty much the only one doing it, hey? Uh, yeah, there's, there's other guys starting – to get into it, I know Ben's getting into bit of, Ben players getting a bit of co- into a bit of coaching. Oh, sick! Um, yeah, Mitch Mit Rollins is keen to get into into it as well. Uh, but yeah, as far as running camps and kind of uh, making a consistent go at it, yeah, yeah I've been one. we well, definitely one of the first Australians. Hayden Bunting got into it a while ago. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's just uh, like super rewarding. Yeah, for me. Yeah, it's and, amazing, and it, man. Yeah, it keeps me in the water and and makes for a nice lifestyle and keeps my family afloat. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's cool. cool. Just uh, before in that last section, did you notice that where drop knee pit wonton got at pipe backside? Yeah, yeah. That was on New Year's Eve. Oh, was it really? Yeah. So that yeah. was while Brett's boards were being stolen and the Y2K yeah. bug was about to go off. Wow. <laughs> and I, and the really funny story about that wave. So I was one of the guys sitting, I was being sitting behind the camera. Do you remember if you filmed that or Chris Bryan filmed that? I filmed that. You filmed that, yeah. Yep. So I think you and Chris were in the channel and I was basically behind you guys. And I remember the lineup was completely silent that whole wave, like he as he was skimming in off second reef. Speak of the devil. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> so there's Chris Bryan, yeah, the um, filmer and editor, creator of Hard Life and Hard Life 2. And he's so, gone, gone on to work with Attenborough re- recently. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, become very successful. And he, he, he was, um, yeah, had a cool drop knee style and just always like forever super passionate and um, pretty like creative and driven guy. Yeah. And definitely he was up for some, doing some funny stuff, wasn't Is this, he? I wasn't paying attention. This was an old drop knee section. Yeah, so there's Michael Crawley did his Valley Eyewear yep. nowadays. So. Yeah, there you go. So you have <laughs> Valley Eyewear. Went on to become quite a uh, good stand-up surfer as well and uh, – yeah, Lucky just, with his Land Cruisers. <laughs> it's yeah. been inspirational, especially to me. I've picked myself up yeah, some Land Cruisers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. finish off and you were in the channel. Yes, yeah, so I was everyone. in the channel and it was dead silent so I could hear his board just skimming, you know, like when you hear a boat going real fast through still water. So I could hear his board skimming coming off Second Reef and yeah, I knew the wave well by that stage. I could see how heavy it was going to be coming up. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, his backside dropped me skimming – like kind of struggling to, to get control with so much speed. And then he came into first reef and like lined himself up and because it sucked out so much and that's where a bodyboard thrives, he was able to destroy this perf- that perfect line through that pit and still the, the, the whole the lineup and the channel was so quiet and I was just kind of fro- like in shock a bit. Yeah. It's like this is like groundbreaking what's <laughs> going on but no, I'm, I'm just in shock. No one's uh, hooting or yelling and he's not making a noise and then – yeah, that, that I was just slow mo watching that barrel, and then he came out, and I was just like, I think as he started screaming with his claiming it, I started screaming. As yeah, well. I remember cheering as well. I remember, yeah, I think it was yeah, glary afterwards, yep. and I felt I was so out of position, like I was so far away, but the wave was so big, the wide shot actually looked good because you got to yep. see pipe in all its glory. Yeah, but yeah. at the time, I was like thinking, I fuck that. There was a bit of a lump, and I was like, oh, yeah, but then looking back, it, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah, that's the worst feeling when someone gets like wave of the millennium and you you think you might have fucked it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you've you've had a few of those. Um, it'd be a heart sinking feeling. Yeah, <laughs> and it's good though when it comes out. It's like oh, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah. Do you remember this little girl Petra? <laughs> Poor thing, straight from school to a bunch of blokes all laughing at her <laughs> as she walks in the door. Legendary Toby player. With the old school... What do what, you call this stuff? I don't know. I think you just call it the, um, the coke trick. Okay. But yeah, I kind of feel sorry for that fire in the hole back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me personally. It's pretty brutal. But they're the things at the time they give you street cred. They're like, fuck, look at these guys. They don't give a fuck. Yeah, they're throwing yeah. full cokes back at people. Like It's disrespectful as hell, but... Just at, yeah, I mean, just at the time, you just watch it and it's hilarious, isn't it? But um, It's kind of when I, I used to work at Maccas, so it's one of them things you almost expect when you're at Maccas. You're like, yeah. you know, it's not your dream job. You're there, you're young, and that's kind of sums it up. Like, you're going to get people being rude to you, drinks thrown at you. <laughs> well, you don't maybe expect it, but the way that girl handled it anyway, she was watching it back at the time. I just didn't even think about her feelings or anything like that. Me Too movement, but yeah. now when I look at it, she handled it pretty well. Yeah, yeah. 
the pressure's on. When the tension's there. <laughs> <laughs> Toby, Dre, Chatty? Yep. Kingy. Kingy. Chatty yep. would have been pretty stoked, I think, being put in this section with these guys. Yeah, for sure. Yep. I yep. think uh, we're going to try to get Chad and Brad in for maybe Tension 4 if we, if yeah, we do so this. Yeah, what's, so what's the plan here, Whitey? So we're getting started I guess, here yeah, on we'll Tension 1. Yeah, we'll see how they go and just get a different um, guest in that was sort of prevalent in the movie at yeah. the time. Yeah, And then maybe get Hardballs back for number 10, the final yeah, yeah, final episode sure. if you're keen. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've had uh, forever people hyping up Tension 11 or the Tension Reunion and any sort of thoughts or visions on on what lays ahead for I, any sort of future yeah. tension related projects. I'll never say never. Like just yep. sitting here chatting to you, like with you putting back into the sport, like doing all your coaching and all that, like I would love to do something like that, that enabled a whole new generation to come through. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be looked at like I'm trying to milk it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. Sure. Th- this whole yep. tension period was, it's a, it was twenty two decades ago. So if I did something again, it would it would be totally separate. Yeah, but sure. Yeah, I'd love to just to try and boost the the sport and get it sort of do whatever I can. Do if you know do, what I mean. do basically what you did here is just getting people amped and um, excited about being a part of a this fun thing to do, yeah. which was not just in the water but on land and done with friends. Yeah, at, at an age where yeah, that's all you want to be doing is just like having a sick time, making each other laugh. And if you're Andre pulling out your massive penis. <laughs> <laughs> All for the name of entertainment, eh? It's all to get a laugh. <laughs> this, so this uh, king is on one of my boards here at this time, I remember. In Hawaii? Yeah, yeah. So th- that was one of my tube sports. Um, he was getting me- mez boards at the same time from the same factory, but he was just like experimenting with shapes. Yeah. And um, yeah, I remember he really liked that board. This were, these were mostly PE boards at this stage. Um, Back when Dow was good, hey? Yeah, yeah. It was like the second generation of Dow. So it was after the 90s mores. Then it went on to the a Dow cores that were called Asahi yep. um, in the late 90s. And uh, yeah, they had definitely more flex than today's Polypro, but just different advantages and different type of feel. <laughs> Speaking of feel, that... Um Looked really realistic, didn't it? All the boards falling down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so you're skating on um, – you've kind of forever been into skating, eh? Since I kind of from, dropped from off from the skating, young. but back in these days, like 20-year-olds, we, we everything was just – we're either surfing, picking grapes – or skateboarding and doing yeah. this, you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was going to say before, for time period wise. So when I finished school in '96, I moved down with my mum, and we actually rented a house down Chadditch. Remember that Narraba? Yep. Yep. Narraba. And we had a house down there for a while, and then um, that ended up. I think we got to the end of the lease, and then I had my my brother was coming down visiting, and then he was going through trouble, and then I think we kind of moved. Well, mum moved back up to Perth, so I ended up staying yep. down south by myself yeah. for a while. Yep. And um, we somehow wound up living in a caravan park while I was yep. filming most of this. And then mum, oh, right. yeah. mum moved back down, so I think my brother could live in the house up in Perth. So me and mum were living in the Margaret River Caravan Park. And it's just funny to think where we were. And I remember there was this lesbian couple that lived next door. <laughs> yeah. All sorts of noise through the night and just like wow. seedy caravan. Like we actually started in a tent for like a few months. Oh, and really? Then got upgraded yeah, into, into one of the permanent on-site vans. Humble beginnings of yeah. the and we're tension living, regime. We're living, uh, I mean, working on the vineyards. Yep. Picking grapes. Yep. Which was you always, and Husey and Chad. And uh, yeah, it's, at times that was them as well. They were there as well. But a lot yep. of it was... Um, yeah, with so that's like, you there skating. Yeah, that was actually a pretty big kickflip. Remember, this was my downfall. Buckling my hip. We <laughs> has that uh, Leo with the paint in front of the Cronulla RSL just before. Yeah. <laughs> the legend has it the paint was there for about five years. No the way. The green stain on the oh road. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, Benny Pateman's young brother Toby and Andy. That was yeah, man. Them times skating it was it was so good because obviously the waves aren't good all the time. So having skateboarding. Well, for when the waves were bad, you would just – and Mario Kart, that was a big thing back oh, then. Oh, yeah. So yep. we just used to, yeah, have the best time. Yeah. But, I mean, so a lot of that time was spent, like, outdoors doing, like, bodyboarding, skating, stunts. Yeah. So well, there's, there's pre- you're, you're entertaining like, yourself. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is – yeah, this was pro- sort of a renowned piece of tension history, this Jethro line. So he was – 
What That's one of our yeah, Margaret Rivers, more well-known doctors there. Yeah. And he actually, yeah, got hit up about this a lot, didn't he? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah post, yep. post-operation. I guess it wasn't too typical to film something like that. But I'd, like, I'd like to give a, a shout out to him because he was quite um, crucial in the recovery of my daughter when she had a, a febrile convulsion. That really? was uh, Dr. Sean O'Rourke. Yeah, yeah, he was a hero, he's a hero to me. Yeah, yeah big my, time. Yeah, my daughter had a real scare and had to get flown to Perth and he was just super calm the whole time and, um, yeah, just, just you know, relax the atmosphere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that's the sort of thing that can help with, with healing and uh, recovery in the body is if there's, um, you know, in ca- uh, just a calm and um, controlled environment around, you yeah. know, not, not chaos and panic. Like yeah. this uh, situation here. <laughs> this was kind of pivotal because that, that's a big surfer and around this time it's kind of like there was a fair bit of surfer versus bodyboard sort of beef and to see like a bodyboarder here not take a backward step and then like dunking him like it kind of... It was a sign of the times. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. like, yeah, changing of the guard almost like... So yeah. it's good to actually capture that. Well, it's, you know, the, the name of the video is Perfect Tension. There was a lot of tension in the lineup uh, at this time all around the world between um, surfers and bodyboarders. Yeah. Yeah, you can see like, a surfer trying to drop, trying to drop in there, timely. <laughs> but um, Especially in yeah. Hawaii. Like, it used to be a heavy place. Like, if you yeah. messed up. Oh, you're, definitely. You're yeah. Did you talk about your labs at all? Or? Um, not at the moment, mate. I'm- Bolton the good old work. mullet, eh? Oh, really? Yeah. That's a sign oh, of the time. Oh, <laughs> Actually, no, mullets are eternal, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, I was sporting a mullet <laughs> yeah. in 2019. Just because you've got the classic case I'm of actually labs. Actually, considering it back and sides. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's another CKY term. Right. Yeah, considering giving Van a modern day mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a choice in that? He... Nah. <laughs> well, he has to wear a top knot at school, so he wants oh, me to really? just. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. So I just chop the top knot off and it'll give him a natural yeah. mullet. Yeah, natural mullet. This is where drop rolls go too far almost. <laughs> it's actually tunneled, eh? That's two weeks in the AFL. And they're scaring her. Was, were there any uh, ever repercussions from doing that in the supermarkets? Like were you ever... That's what I was going to ask about the, the front cover. So that's yep. you in the old school shopping centre, Mark River. I believe yep, in it was the IGA. Scott Farris's film camera back then. Yep. <laughs> it's pre-digital. So, yeah, we are filming all this on, like, uh, on mini DV tapes. Yep. They'd, they'd only just come out. That was like breaking technology. Yeah. The three yep. cheap cameras <laughs> was all the rage. Yeah, and slide film. Yeah. So, yeah, that Mugger River. How do we think of that for the cover? I think I just remember that, know- that around that time there was a lot of dackings going on where you just pull people's pants down from at, uh, without warning. Yeah. And uh, I think it was just sort of epitomised the the – the tension title. Yeah. And I like the yeah, colour, the red do, and the black. It's like a warning hey, like Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do you remember like wanting, choosing me to be on the cover? Oh, yeah. Like, I remember, you, remember that like, part. Yeah. It was definitely going to be you. It was just what sort of photo. Um, yeah. Uh, that's kind of pretty perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to get all erratic here, like it was her fault that I fell over and lost my food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's on the Central Coast staying with big stews. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this is uh, back at the Cronulla RSL again. Yeah. These guys are actually legends. Sammy knew something was, uh, something wasn't quite right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the pretty uh, black pavement before it went green. Oh, is it, I didn't see the green there. Was there no, no, green? there was no green. Oh, yeah, yeah, before it went green. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah, Virtue and Ben. So the, Virtue was, um, Ben was already established and Virtue was sort of a, uh, the up and coming guy, wasn't he? Yeah. He was yep. just sort of getting in the No Friends videos. <laughs> How, what was his link to the No Friends guys? Um, he got sponsored by the No Friends clothing brand. In Australia, through Stroey? Yeah, yeah in Australia, through Stroey. And um, sponsored by LMNOP, which was That's another right. brand yeah. of the No Friends guys. Um, but at this stage, he's riding a tubes ward. Yep. Yeah. He was on the tubes team with me at one stage. And... He had a, a pivotal injury at one point where he hurt his knee at, at box and was out of the water for six weeks. And um, it was a, a, in that time that we had sort of time to reflect and think about where he wanted to go. And he just, I don't know whether he had a dream or a vision, but he just had an epiphany that he just wanted to do airs. Yeah. And just that, that was what he wanted to do. And that, that, I guess that was what he saw as his way to shine. You know, you can see here he's like, 
really high speed rider and just like shines when he's in the air. Yeah, he's and Tommy. He got his feet out of the water and drew a line. And just had really good speed, hey. Yeah, and he'd get yeah. good release from the lip. Yeah, like nothing was catching. Yeah, that's just- right. Yeah, and then you know the moment he channeled, started channeling into that after he's come back from his injury. He just like really started to go to another level in the air. Like him and sort of Hubbard at that point were yep. really like leading the world um, of air with air moves. Yeah. yeah. Such a competitive guy is, is Sean. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And that's, um, yeah, just one of the elements that will drive you to um, like a world level. Yeah. And how about Ben? You, you and Ben. Ben, did he go to the Hawaii one year before you? Yeah. Yep. He went in 95, 96 was a pretty epic season yes which um like he, he spent a lot of time there and uh he's always shined in, in hawaii yeah and and you know pipe he's he grew up with the left wedge at whaley so you know riding lefts at pipe uh, which is so, sort of a bit of a wedge the way it pushes down the beach just suited his, his riding to a t and, and he loves like challenging himself in the bigger heavier stuff and going for big moves and like being competitive and trying to ride the highest level and um yeah, that definitely all led to him being one of the best bodyboarders ever at Pipe. Yeah. To, to watch, you know, he's really good to watch out there and he no, just knows the lineup really well. Yeah. Remember Tim Benython's movie, The Contest? Yeah. And he's got that quote, the barrel's as big as your mum's cooking room. Yeah, was that him or his brother? Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's kind of announced himself to the world, hey? Yeah, like yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was... Fearless like young that, Aussie. That contest was incredible and it had really good media around it. Yeah. And um, yeah, sometimes it can just be one or just one wave in, in a highly um, covered media event, but like event or free surf, or whatever. And that can, you know, get you, that can just send echoes throughout the world with your name. Yeah, for sure. What, so, what year was your Tahiti skins win? That was in 2000. That's yeah. this year as well. But yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, this, this, well, some of this was 99. I guess the, the pipe comp was 99, 2000. Yep. So, it was. Um, did you feel like that was your in that arrival in the world? Sorry? Did you, that feel like that was your arrival? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, like, like we are saying, if it's one, one event or wave that sends shockwaves through the world and, and, and helps someone arrive on the scene, then Chopes was definitely my um, moment, which kind of catapulted me onto the international stage. Yeah. Okay, classic Moffat. He was into a bit of sort of dance at school. Hey, what, what's it called, that subject where you... Uh, yeah, just like uh, theatre and dance. Yeah, so he's... This is a stitch up. <laughs> what happens here? Talk us through The it. chick made out like the chair hit a kid. Oh, was yeah. nowhere near her kid. It's just another example of someone that's already a little on edge and... Yeah, you get some She's associating young cocky people around. <laughs> associating as a mum, but I think that would have been a build-up of events. Like we were probably farting, burping, oh, okay. yeah, being yeah. generally rude and she'd yeah. be just looking for an excuse to fire back off it at us. Yeah. And then she, yeah, she made up a falsy. Classic Bunbury too. Oh, yeah, Bunno. <laughs> or you can eat Pizza Hut. I don't think it exists in Australia anymore. I heard the one of the last standing ones at Cura on the Goldie has um, since moved on. Yeah, I thought but they were... How like, cheap was it back? In, it was like four five, dollars, bucks. five bucks for all-you-can-eat pizza. And you know we used to take our <laughs> lunch boxes and bags. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I often wonder about this. So people are... This is the ATM in Margaret River. I wondered how many phone calls the police station received from, <laughs> from people. Like, Did you ever actually have the police call your personal phone? Well, back here we... Mobile oh, phones mobile. were pretty much for drug dealers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. I had one around this time cause, just because the Cronulla guys did. But yep. there's no point in having a phone if no one else had a phone, you know what I mean? Yeah. But once I had that group of friends in Cronulla that had phones, I got a phone as well and then just to sort of yep. talk with them. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I often wondered. Because I ended up getting to know the police down there. <laughs> and do you remember, I guess we'll chat about it in another movie, but... I think it was Tension 2 of tension. where we are filming you singing a song and they drove past. Yeah, yeah, they drove past. And he's yeah. like, we What's love you, Ryan. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, uh, small a small town, eh? Yeah. It's like a huge... Early Jeff Hub, braces. Yeah. This is like, uh, a, as a filmmaking no-no, tension. I was just... 
pointing a camera in his face asking a random question that's, that's a, with with no <laughs> no foresight in what question he was going to get so it was, yeah. it was a bit of a rookie sort of maneuver but <laughs> had been the gentleman he is he just pushed through didn't dove he? into it yep that was a really good um cross dissolve there hub to alien yeah <laughs> <laughs> spot on yeah the like uniqueness that he brought with his riding to bodyboarding and just how crazy he'd go in the air was like such a big step up from what um, guys had done in the air previous, I reckon. Yeah. Mm. He's just like this little ball of muscle, hey? Yeah. Nothing's yeah. going to break him. Yep, light and very, very stringy and strong. And it just made him lightweight, super fast and, and like tolerable to land heavy airs. Like he, he's, you know, in his um, – getting close to mid-40s now and he's still in the same shape. And yeah. And still be, you know, up for hitting all these sections. Yeah. It's funny. I look at this because obviously I, I hadn't been to school for any sort of editing or whatever. And there's like a few like L cuts in there, a few J cuts, a few like montages yeah, okay. mixing the thing. But I just look back and it's what I like about it is the rawness. It's like, it's like I said, oh, I'm going to make a movie. So then I just did it. It was like, you know how you can say you're going to do things and then not follow through and do them. I yep. actually like moments like this where I say I'm going to do something like with the podcast that we're doing at the moment. I mm-hmm. remember speaking to my friend Buddha. I was like, Oh, we should do a podcast. And then two weeks later, like we're doing the Grin Reapers podcast. Yeah. It's just, yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's just <laughs> something to be proud of. Yeah. That you just like throw yourself out there. Yeah. Like, well, you know, have, have a vision, which is, you know, it's a pretty far away dream at the time when you probably would have, barely even known how to operate a camera exactly yeah Yeah, and then it all comes together that's pretty rewarding isn't once it? you get a ball rolling and you just get motivated to do something and you you work the rest out as it goes hey as long yeah. as you've got that initial will to yeah. do something so anyone yeah listening that's thinking of doing a video or a movie or a book or starting something you just do it and figure it out later <laughs> you just you never regret it you never look back and regret things that you try you know what i mean yeah Especially if it's you know, if it's really coming from the heart, it's something you that you really have good intentions in wanting to create. Yeah. So this is a moment I was I was impressed with myself with that ball, <laughs> with that ball. That was a bloody good ball. It was not. It was very damaging. And now, like as a movie, yeah, like I was just saying, like I just look back at it with such fond memories. All of us just having the good time. Hmm. And like obviously I've been gone through some bad stuff so with my brother passing away so anything positive that we could do and yeah. having laughter it was such a good release from all this other from negative other stuff you yeah with. Yep. Yep. look at this caring lady <laughs> that's what that's how to react to someone eh, if they fall over <laughs> she's almost borderline hugging me yeah <laughs> but man yeah so thanks so much for coming in this is obviously the credit so it's coming to the end but yeah is there a what if you could look at 20-year-old hard balls. Which I just looked at. Yeah. Yep. What would 40-year-old Hardy, what, any advice you'd give 20-year-old Hardy? Oh, I just, I just feel like uh, like patting myself on the back. <laughs> yeah, just give myself a hug to say, and um, that's, it's so nice to see that like real pure smile. And um, for, for you too, you know, like for, we, we uh, had both had things at that stage of our lives that were you know, negative or um, could have brought us down, but we like reached you know, deep within our hearts, I guess you'd say, and, and just um, rose above it and, yep. and just went for it, you know, went for the things that we dreamed about and, and the things that inspired us and uh, we inspired other people along the way. Yeah, unbelievable yeah. to think, hey, that yeah. it's like such a win-win. We had such a good time ourselves and then other people obviously liked it and it, yeah, led us to our lives with – have us here sitting now with kids and families yeah, and yeah, 40 year old and we're still active and doing all this sort of shit so yeah yeah it's a big part of our story that i mean yeah for me traveling as a bodyboarder and, and being the coach nowadays um for sure i'd say being a part of tension is the thing that i get asked about the most or the thing that people will know me from or or be able to relate to me yep. um in, in certain way whether whether they're a bodyboarder or not yeah yeah so that's yeah that's pretty big in itself yeah. 20 years on <laughs> <laughs> and also i want to give a massive thank you to every person that was involved in this movie <laughs> yeah like it just doesn't seem enough just putting a thank you on the title on the credits but it's like obviously you can't constantly talk to and ring everyone but 
yeah, yeah. all these guys, like this is the time of our lives and I'm so glad that I had them as friends and it's, yeah, memories we can all cherish. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. Something to definitely be proud of and it'll be timeless like the – like your timeless pictures present says yeah do not send anything to that email because i do not have it <laughs> here we go be the little send off dance uh, break dancing that me i mean my brother used to practice with a piece of the face cheers chuck <laughs> <laughs> just battling on uh, good times and that's the the classic sunset from hawaii that you see <laughs> <laughs> chatty smile in there if you record me on that without my permission it is illegal yeah yeah what what laws? Had him stumped there with what yeah. laws, didn't we? Okay, if you if you're using your sort of catch, really. All right, if he's not using sound, you can do it. He can do it. All right, but he's still not allowed to use it in here for security purposes. You turn the bloody thing off now. <laughs> that is us, hard balls, man. That was epic. Dang. That was Amazing. fun watching that with you, man. Yeah, really fun. I had a drink. I Love didn't even it. take a sip the entire time. I'm going to need to go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, we're not done. Oh, no. Oh, no yep. it's, it's just replaying. It's Brett just banging into the door again. But you're going to have to get you back for number 10 as well, man. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing who else you bring in for talk about the rest of the series and get to just get into like rewatch them all. Yeah. Yeah, epic. Legend. Yeah. Boom. And a handshake. And a hug. Yeah, love you, one. Yeah. Balls. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>